Hello everybody and welcome to the Golden Grotto Lounge where drinks have been flowing for some time now because we've just watched the premiere of the first episode of this new podcast Bond Aficionados in Conversation. Aficionados is a very difficult word to say when you're drunk. I've just had half a bottle of wine and with me now for this episode are Yannick Zenos and the composer of the intro title theme that you just heard and of course Willy and we're a basically German speaking team. Yannick you're from Switzerland, Willy you're from Solingen in Germany and I'm from Braunschweig and uh, we're going to throw around some exchanges and opinions about Bond. How did you like the first episode? Very good. I liked it very much. Uh, it was a great start. Uh, it was a great launch, in my opinion, to uh, get a very, very interesting podcast in the James Bond fan franchise. And yeah, uh, it might be. Um, uh, I hope it, it's going to run like the James Bond uh, franchise, sixty or seventy years. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. There was a there was a big silence before the answer. I edited that out. You couldn't hear it, but uh, it, it was there. Yannick, I, I, you laughed. You laughed automatically because I don't know. <laughs> I love this yes, podcast thing. Yeah, yeah. Yannick and me, we, we have been doing a podcast for how long now? We, we started in September. I, I thought so. Half a year, yeah. Last year, yeah. A, a German German speaking, uh, not about Bond, not Bond related at all. Okay. We wanted to do, do a podcast for a long time. Well, I just well, I just ran into your door with the idea and thought it would like be nice. It. Yeah, and it and it's uh, it's really fun. And I thought, why not do that about Bond? I mean, there's so many things to and so many opinions to get about mm -hmm. Bond. Uh, and you just uh, started off on what your first Bond film was. So I let you continue. I get a drink from the bar. Can I get you anything? Yeah, uh, a, a martini and a coke. <laughs> A martini and a coke. In, and a in coke, one glass. yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. separately. Yeah, separately. God, that's disgusting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what Danny, the... can I get you anything? Uh, I still have my juice, thank you. Right. <laughs> juice? Seriously, juice? Yeah. Yanni, juice, come on. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. But there's still some coffee also, so I'm good, okay. thank you. And I hope there's not uh, milk standing around either. <laughs> 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 Juice bollocks. <laughs> bollocks to that. <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> oh, oh god. But uh, yeah, it's one of your favorite swear words. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and, right. And and one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Which which were the ones that we like? Pillock. Oh yeah, that was that was mm -hmm. that was that was like the thing okay. for us for a while. Yeah, pillock. That was the one. Yeah. Exactly. So, Willy. Yes. Uh, I was I was just wondering. You were just ref you were talking about like your first Bond movie that you saw yeah. in the cinema, which is called that. And you then what what puzzled me? You then said, "I like it." Uh, I I I like this movie. Yes, I like it. You like you it? You don't? Yeah, I, of course I do. But but like okay. is like a very soft word. I mean, I love Goldeneye. Absolutely love it. Um, I mean. I've seen this movie or uh, some several times, of course. And uh, the last time I've seen it was one and a half year ago. Um, and I did it with her ex-girlfriend. And unlucky me, I'm not anymore in a relationship with her. Of course, this movie reminds me particularly uh, in um, dealing with this woman. Of course, she never saw a James Bond movie in her entire life, and we started yeah. up with Golden Eye. And mm -hmm. so I say I like it. <laughs> the movie itself is um, adorable. It is uh, stunning. I mean, Pierce Brosnan does such a great job as a James Bond, and mm -hmm. it started from the very first minute. Mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. in the middle of the movie. It started from the very first minute, and it, it it's with the end scene where they are in Cuba, or is it Cuba? I think it's Cuba where they oh. shoot it. Yeah. And the whole movie works. And uh, Benjamin, uh, you were referring in, um, with Jorrit in the first episode about uh, uh, Gottfried Jun, uh, mm. who played Dormov. And nobody in, in the US uh, cinema goers, they, they, they wasn't aware that this guy can't perform like, like that. And I mean, Gottfried Jun did such an amazing job. It, it was, yeah. it was, all the cars did a great job in this movie. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. it, it was a movie that works completely well for me, and uh, it still does, of course. So uh, yes, yeah. But speaking speaking of Gottfried Jon, uh, I mean, he became quite famous later on because I mean, he he, he you know played in some uh, like international box office movies. Yeah. I remember very charismatic. Uh, uh, face Gottfried Jorn. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Great face. Yeah. A, a Bond villain face, I yeah. would say. A great yeah. Bond villain face. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's one of the few actors I always say I would have loved to to, yeah. to have met in, in his time. Now he's unfortunately yeah. dead, but uh, yeah, yeah, great character. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Who are, yeah. who are the other German actors? Uh, beside Gerd Fröbe, of course, beside Claude Oliver Rudolph, ah, uh, Claude Oliver Gertz Otto, <laughs> Götz Otto, of course. Uh, who else is? Oh, it was, I think, in Casino Real, it was, is it Martin Tarach? Um, yeah, Tarach yeah or it, it, was, it was Jürgen Tarach. Jürgen Tarach. It was yeah. um, Ludger Pistor. Oh, and yeah. you have uh, yeah. Clemens Schick. Yeah. Yeah, Clemens Schick, who lives yeah. in Han Hanover. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Clemens Schick, who was that? Is uh, it? He played Krat. He was uh, the right hand man of, of Le Chiffre. Benjamin, mm -hmm. was, uh, was it uh, with uh, Anatole Taubmann who played in Quantum of Solace? But he's not German. He's, he's an, no. uh, Swiss. He's Swiss. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. Swiss. Okay. Swiss man. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Elvis. <laughs> to pay Elvis. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, in the older ones with Sean Connery, there were uh, Karen Dorr as the Bond girl. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and um, Rosa Klepp was played by uh, Lotte Lenya. She's her, she was, uh, she, ah, yeah, she's she, she was a well. she, she was a former wife of Kurt Weir. Uh, absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kurt, Kurt, who's that? Kurt Weil. Kurt, Kurt Weil. He wrote uh, oh, the yeah. Three Penny Opera. Didn't yeah, he? Three Penny Opera. Mm -hmm. Okay, I yeah. see. And then, yeah. of course, you have uh, Stromberg. You have Kurt Jürgens. Yeah, oh, great, great, great. Of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 Can't fantastic, the fantastic, very, very. actor. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm merely exhilarating the whole process, Mr. Bond. Ah, oh, yes. what a sentence. Ah, oh, great. Yeah. 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 And, and, of course you and of course, you don't count... Ah, um, oh, God, what was his name? Benjamin, you met him. The name so just as... No, no, no. I think, but but like, you, he's considered Austrian. The uh, Brandauer. Oh yes, Brandauer. Klaus Maria Brandauer. Yeah, he's uh, Klaus Maria. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was. But, he but, was. He was. Yeah. He was good in uh, Never Say Never Again. He was great. It was I mean, really the good. Movie, the movie itself is uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but his performance as Lago was uh, magnificent. He was. Yeah, he was, was crazy good. and yeah, right. Yeah. It was really good. And as uh, yeah. I uh, established in, in another episode before uh, with John Byrne in that episode, uh, the relationship between Domino and Lago is a totally different one than in yeah. Thunderball. And that is very, very interesting. Kim Basinger played it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It was really, really, really good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But Claude right. Oliver Rudolph is sort of like a trigger for you, <laughs> Yannick. <isn't it? laughs> he's just a, such a he's such an over the top character. He's so you know I can't take him seriously somehow. It's just uh, yeah. I, I saw an interview of him lately on the Oh Really 007 podcast, I think, and, and he was so was so blown up and 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 like you know because of these like a two minute in total scenes that he had. He think he's oh I, I went with Barbara and all this. He's so ah. Yeah, he yeah. was in he was in Wolfgang Petersen's Das Boot. Yeah, Das mm -hmm. Boot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were yep. a bunch of other German actors uh, like ah. Wernemeyer and right. uh, oh, who, who else? And he has that bad boy attitude. <laughs> yes, does you know he? Who else? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Who else? Who has, yeah, of course. I know. <laughs> He looks, he, he looks Martin, little, Martin Semmelroge, yeah, he was. Martin uh, Semmelroge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Claude Oliver Rudolph, uh, guys, I think he he really has this evil face for a Bond movie. That's right. Uh, That's with right. a scarf and whatever yeah. in his face, yeah. and he's mm -hmm. uh, uh, he looks a little bit like her, like her, uh, like a big dog uh, in the cage, uh, forgotten right. by a very rich yeah. uh, contrast. <laughs> exactly. And he always gets these roles. He always gets yeah. villain roles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, totally yeah. typecast. Yeah. yeah, totally, totally, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I would have, I would have loved to see at some point. I would have um, imagined this. I would have loved Klaus Kinski as wow. a Bond villain. Wow. 
Klaus <laughs> Imagine. Filming oh. would have been so difficult. <laughs> yeah. Original oh. oh, Raketen Klaus. <laughs> Raketen Klaus. Ro I'm, rocket, I'm, rocket Klaus. Yes. Oh, rocket Klaus, yes. <laughs> but, I'm, uh, but I'm glad that they at least go with uh, God Froebel, or despite her uh, uh, worst uh, English to that date. But I think his English was not so bad. I used to uh, get my hands on a, on a YouTube video where they shown the trailer. And the right. voice in this trailer, it was okay. It was it was it was right. better than the dubbing voice in the original version, in my exactly. opinion. Exactly. Yeah, but that yeah. was because he got uh, acting and speaking lessons from yeah. Nikki Vanderzil, the voice yeah. of the Bond girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. since in every film they shoot scenes in random order, yeah. uh, he did not speak English in the scenes they filmed at uh -huh. the beginning. But okay. his English was very very good towards the end of filming yeah. where they filmed scenes from the beginning of goldfinger yeah. so yeah. they yeah. made the decision to dub him completely and michael collins as i said before did a superb job of imitating yeah. his voice which is a yeah. very distinctive voice that's true his voice yeah really 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 great actor yeah and klaus kinski that would have been something he would have been a fantastic max zorin yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you want me to do. What, what, what do you mean, act psychotic? Uh, I am! <laughs> this would have been fantastic. Uh, he was, who, who else could, could play in a James Bond movie as a villain from the German actor's side? Oh. Uh, present or past? Uh, present and part. Uh, let, let's say the past ones, course. Uh, I'm really bad on on German current uh, films and TV landscape. I'm really bad at that because I too. rarely me watch too. any German yeah. stuff. Mm. Yeah, me too. How about how about that actor who played in Weissensee and uh, and uh, and that uh, Italian cop, Uwe Kokisch? Yeah. Uwe Kokisch. Okay. Oh, Uwe Kokisch. okay. Mm. Uwe Kokisch. Yeah. Mm. He Our, played mm -hmm. uh, Commissario Brunetti. Yes, that's what I was yeah, looking for. Yeah, Brunetti, yeah, right, yeah, right. Brunetti. Exactly. Willy, yeah, Willy speaks it. very well Italian, by the way. Mm -hmm. so, like so, yourself, uh, yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're just maybe right. maybe I, 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 catch, my, I catch up some words because I used to have a relationship with an uh, Italian from the south of Italy. Uh, I consider her one of the most beautiful girls I ever had around me. Uwe Kokisch? Yeah, yeah Uwe Kokisch too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, I Yannick, had a date laugh yourself to death. I, I had a date with Klaus Kinski. Uh, it was an interview really? with him, and he was like, "Yeah, you don't oh, ask the right question." I, I cannot imitate him. It's not possible. But I can. <laughs> you you do very great impersonation of Klaus Kinski, by the way. Mm, yeah, because Yannick yeah. and me, we do many impersonations on on our show, on our podcast show, on the, mm -hmm. on the German speaking one. Uh, well, we had we had a lot. We uh, did. We at one time we recorded an episode uh, where several famous people were on a train, a train, right. train and right. all the train toilets were not working. And on the exactly. train okay. there was uh, former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt. <sighs> then there was Helge Schneider. Uh -huh. There was Kurt Krömer. Uh, one of our best comedians, mm -hmm. Al Pacino. You didn't like that, Yannick, of course, Al Pacino, because my Al Pacino is always based on hoo ha. That's that's basically all I can do. And Hella von Sinn. Hella von Sinn. Hella von German Sinn. Comedian. Udo, Udo. And Hugo, Hugo Egon Balda. Yeah, Hugo Balda. Hugo Egon Balda. And, uh, and here, um, ah, um, nicht Hugo, uh, Udo Lindenberg, ne? Lindenberg. Yeah, Udo Lindenberg. Yeah, Udo Lindenberg, Udo Lindenberg, of course. Yeah. 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 One, of, yeah. one of our, our, our great performers. But let me, let me, without Im impersonation, yeah. let's say I'm a casting agent. Okay. For a for a Bond film, yeah. the, the the Bond film you would like to star in, what role would you <laughs> like to have? Would you be a, a villain? Would you be an ally, Willie? What would you be? I would. I think I would be a villain. Yes. Okay, because yeah. I I will, I will give you lines uh, to yeah. say. Yannick, what would you like to be? I would like to be something like Oromov, you know, some sort of of Soviet Russian, you know, Cheers something like guys. that. Cheers. So you would like cheers, cheers. Yes. So you both would play villains. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let since we spoke about Gold and I, the scene on the train, Travelian and Uromov are holding Natalia hostage on the train. 
James Bond says that line, what has this Cossack promised you? And the only line you just have to say, Yannick, as Uramov, is, is this true? And Willy, you're going to be Alec Trevelyan. Mm. Okay. So we read that scene together, sort of like a table read nice. okay. that they do. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to be Bond. Mm-hmm. Urumov, what has this Cossack promised you? You knew, didn't you? He's a Lian's Cossack. It's in the past. He'll betray you, just like everyone else. Is this true? What's true is that in 48 hours, you and I will have more money than God. And Mr. Bond here will have a small memorial service with only money penny and a few tearful restorators in attendance. Okay, so you went for a lot of pauses. Villains need pauses mm-hmm. yeah. yes. to bring to bring that point across. Right. Was there, was there a, a villain who spoke really fast? Drax was very slow. Dra- Drax yes. was slow. Yeah. Stromberg was very slow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that we always can follow that. Right. Yeah, to build up tension. Yeah. Yeah. Yannick, you yes. do that. Do Urumov as a defense minister. I must protest. This is mm. my investigation. You're out of order. Yeah. Do you know the entire uh, yeah. text? Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm Dimitri Mishkin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's. Oh, that's gonna Mishkin. Oh, that's gonna be great. Mishkin. So, okay. so where do we pick it up? When when, when Urumov comes in, or at what what? Point yeah. you pick it up. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll give you I'll give you the the, the script intro and mm-hmm. you're gonna speak Urumov. Benjamin, you really know I, that by I... heart? Yeah. Benjamin, okay. can I do the marching music sound? Uh, if... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Willie, you do the you do the marching band, but that, okay. that's way before. That's way yeah, before. Yeah. That's way that before thing. when they when the scene used to to shoot on the on the uh, Russian government. Uh... Okay. Good. Yeah. You do the marching music. Uh, okay. You, Willie, music. Okay. That's actually quite good. Mm-hmm. Script. Urumov storms into the interrogation room where Bond and Natalia are being held. Defense Minister, I must protest. <laughs> okay, no, okay, here we go again. Now let me let me take from sir. Defense Minister, I must protest. This is my investigation. You're out of order. From what I'm hearing, it is you who's out of order. I've seen this gun before, General. Put it down. In the hands of our enemy. Put it down, General. Do you know who the enemy is, Dimitri? Do you? God! <laughs> yeah, it sort of it sort of needs an exit music, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely, absolutely. It's I mean it's the music of the funeral of of of, of uh, uh, defense minister Mishkin. It's called Mishkin, 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 yeah, it's, it, it, Mishkin. Mishkin. Yeah. Oh, somebody speaks Russian. No, I I I have got there the talent to impersonate some. F- some mm. a lot of accents, even German accents, and some. Mm. Uh, it, it's nice. It's nice when you're out with guys who want to or ask you or, hey guy, hey Willy, can you do those accent from Germany? Can you do the Italian or Russian or whatever? Mm. It's always fun of the party or when you're gathering with people. It's uh, it's it's nice to have the ability to do so. Yeah, that's right. Klasna, klasna, товарищ. No, no, ma, в порядке. Не можешь быстрее. Wow. Sounds really Russian. Oh, Hatcho, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the way it's written is actually sp- oh, called a pasna, isn't it? A pasna, right. So well, now yeah. you, can, you can pick a scene that yeah. you want me to play together with you. Okay. Can be from any Bond film. Doesn't have to be Goldeneye. Oh, I would love to do the scene from Dr. No where they are uh, where they're standing in front of the aquarium. And the whole text begins. So one has to play Dr. No. One has to play Honey. And one honey, has to play Bond. Hmm. Uh, and I do play the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we need three. You can't be the fish. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I'm the fish. I would, I would like to do the Sean Connery lines, if it's okay with for you. Okay. So, okay. What we are trying to do is we're reading a 
piece of the original script of Dr. No, uh, with me being Dr. No, Willy is going to be James Bond, and Yannick, I'm sorry, you are Honey Rider. As this is the original script of the film, uh, this is not how it appears in the film, because I think this was sort of the first draft or second draft. So I give you uh, the introductory uh, line that is written here. It's scene 206, interior dining room, Dr. No, night. This is an alcove of the living room opposite which the aquarium wall glows distant, di oh, bollocks, distantly beyond the fainter lights of the candles. Dinner has reached the cheese, fruit and nuts stage. In front of Bond is a cheese board <laughs> with a serrated <laughs> edge. It's a, it's a very good description of it. <laughs> <laughs> most, oh. most of my dinners don't even reach that stage <laughs> I'm glad they don't go with this one so they I, don't, one. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't I don't see us getting through this in, in, in a normal way in front of Bond is a cheese board with a serrated edge knife balanced on it Bond is helping himself as the scene starts so let's pretend this is a table read I'm Dr. No the way I would play Dr. No. I was the unwanted child of a German missionary and a Chinese girl of good family. But I became treasurer of the most powerful criminal society in China. It's raw for the most times to trust anyone who isn't wholly Chinese. What? That is your bond? <laughs> rare, rare. It's rare for the tongs. So I used to, to I used to try a Scottish one. I do another one. I do an um well speaking. Okay. Uh it's rare for the tongues to trust anyone who isn't holy Chinese. They shouldn't have trusted me. I came to America with ten million of their dollars in gold. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm 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 thinking over to, to impersonate uh James Bond with some various accent from Germany of Benjamin, but I uh, it won't it won't be appropriate. Oh uh, okay. Um Bond, um more cheese. <laughs> that that is brilliant, more cheese. Doctor No shakes his head. So you, you, yeah, that's you go how on. you finance this operation. It was a good idea to use atomic power. I was glad to see you can handle it properly. I'd hate to think the the contamination chamber wasn't effective. <laughs> I learned all there is to know about radioactivity the hard way by losing these. Your power source had our organization puzzled for some time. Bluff, Mr. Bond. They are still puzzled. Not any longer. I sent a full report. Bluff again. You haven't contacted your headquarters since your request for a Geiger counter. There are too many files open on you, Dr. No. Our own, the CIA's, the Tong Society, you robbed. When trouble comes, you will find this is a very small and naked island. Crap key is expendable. When my mission here is accomplished, I shall destroy it and move on. The habit of inquiry is persistent. You are wondering where, why, when. I will gratify your curiosity. You are the only person I have ever met capable of appreciating what I have done. And of keeping it to yourself. Just a minute. There's no point in involving the girl. She has nothing to do with us. Let her go free. She promise. Not to talk. No, I won't. I'm staying with you. <laughs> I don't want you. I agree. The girl... Oh, that was too Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, I, agree. I, I agree. agree. I agree the girl has no place here. <laughs> I agree. The girl has no place here. Take her away. She can amuse the guards. Well, uh, it's difficult. It's more difficult than I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's not so Giving... easy. Yeah. No. So no. you see, when when you do it seriously, yeah. Voicing a villain 
on yeah. screen doing it when when the director shouts action i think yeah. that's really difficult yeah to be menacing i think that gives you a feeling of when we say i didn't like that villain because he wasn't menacing enough or something like that try to read some of the scenes out loud and try to be menacing yeah. i think that is really difficult yeah, yeah also also for the other characters you know? yeah. I mean, especially, especially with some of the lines are really goofy if you break them down yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Dr. No, he is, uh, this was the 60s, as Luciana Paluzzi once said to me, the voices on screen, everything was very controlled, very, mm. they learned them and they spoke them and it was timed and it was not like the way we speak today. Mm. You know? mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, there are a lot of villains around today. And we have many voices like Donald Trump, like uh, Vladimir Putin. They all speak in their voice and or Boris Johnson. Right. right. Or Kim right. Jong-un. Kim Jong-un. Oh, Kim Jong -un. Yeah, I, I can't impersonate him. Obviously. I can't oh, impersonate I Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, Kim Jong-un. Can you? Can you? Can you? <laughs> So, so stereotypical. Benjamin, can you do the line? Can, can you can you do the can you do the Doctor No line? Uh, Dom Perignon uh, as an impersonation from by Helmut Schmidt, the former uh, Chancellor of Germany. Oh, uh, uh, oh, um, as uh, oh. Helmut Schmidt as as Doctor No. Yes, that's difficult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really difficult. Because <laughs> that's really difficult because uh, I can do him in German, but I don't know if I can do him in English. Okay, okay. That's uh, Dom Perignon 55. It would be a pity to break it. Mm -hmm. that, that sounded off. No, it sounded... No, 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 it's, it's okay. It's I, would, I, would, I would do Angela Merkel on this line. Oh, God. Oh, nice. <laughs> particular great villain. That's a Dom Perignon 55. It would be a pity to break it. <laughs> That's for Dom Perignon 55. It would be a pity to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Please just imagine the insanity <laughs> of putting somebody like that actually in that role. <laughs> Holy mother. I could, do, I could do Dr. No's next line as Klaus Kinski. That would have, then we see if it would have worked. Yeah, come on. Go ahead. So Dr. No uh, telling Bond to put the knife back when he puts the takes the knife from the table. You are deliberately trying to patronize me. It is ill-advised. You disappoint me, Mr. Bond. I had expected someone nearer the mental level of myself. And put the knife back, Mr. Bond. You <laughs> stupid person. I've had about enough of this. He was crazy. He I was hope... so crazy. Uh, Yannick, I hope Benjamin's still recording. <laughs> Oh, that's gold. I, so it's all gold we're producing here. Oh my god. It's comedy, comedy gold. Mm -hmm. comedy, comedy gold. gold. It's comedy yeah. gold. It's Absolutely. Gold. Yeah. And now you would have... We yeah. tried to read it as Boris Johnson. Oh, Boris Johnson. oh nice. Oh, nice. Live and, live and let die. Boris Johnson as Kananga in mm -hmm. Live and Let Die. <laughs> so somebody who has to speak Bond, who wants to take the honors. Really? He doesn't use German really? one. Really? Okay. I do. I, I, I do the uh, James Bond version of uh, East German. Stasi oh, Bond. Oh god. Oh, so it's gonna have an accent. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna try my best uh, to have a, a, a Boris Johnson Kananga. Okay. So we're in that scene. Um, Bond's wetsuit and knife lie on a table in the next room of the grotto. Oh, huh. how perfect. Seen mm. through the glass wall. Mm. Camera pulls back. Bond and Solitaire stand in front of Kananga's desk, face him, whisper, and the two heavies. Kananga. It is unfortunate. Your wetsuit was discovered only minutes before the fields were destroyed. Don't tell me I'm not in trouble. The, the, the poppy is a sturdy flower. You've been a relatively minor nuisance, in fact. This toy, I find it particularly fascinating. What is it? I thought everyone knew our shotgun naturally with compressed cos pellets. Cos <laughs> pellets. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. 
liquid it... compressed gas pellets. <laughs> this is so difficult. <laughs> oh, is it... This is such a small line, but now it has become impossible to do it. <laughs> Genius! Careful, come on, God. Don't pull the pin out. The air in this room full enough already. Kananga flashes a cold look, snaps his chair forward, rises, champagne in one hand, pallet in the other, motions the heavies to escort Bond and Solitaire into the next room. He precedes them, camera following. But, uh, somehow, I, I, I never expected you to be a sore loser, Mr. Bond. But I was more hoping you'd join me in a toast to the future. Uh, uh, Solitaire used to know all about the future. Uh, uh, she was especially good at uh, predicting uh, death. <laughs> oh, this is so, this is <laughs> so wrong. Amazing. It's so good. Phantom is so, so fucking it's good. So, so good. good. It is so, so wrong to do that. The only yeah. thing missing is Trump. <laughs> well, is this there a role for Trump? I can do it, you know. It's the best. I can wow. do it. Okay, what what villain should we give Trump? Oh, that that should be an easy pick. Let's let's take Le Chiffre. Le Chiffre is, is such a famous character. The torture scene. The torture yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. I I really could imagine uh, Donald Trump. Yeah. Playing Le Chiffre. You <laughs> really so? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's that's the last impersonation. Okay. Yeah. That I'm willing to do. So somebody again has to read Bond. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do it? Oh, Yannick, please uh, go ahead. Yannick, I, okay. Yes. I, Yannick. Do the, I, I do the marching music part. I thought I was supposed to play drum. Yeah, you can. You can if you like. And then I read you the, the intro. We're at the torture scene with Le Chiffre and Bond. So Le Chiffre has Bond in his captivity. And he's torturing him in the original script with a carpet beater like in the book. Uh, in the film, it is a, a thick rope. Let me read you in. <laughs> Sitting across from Bond, Le Chiffre flicks his wrist upward. We hear the impact of the carpet beater. Bond convulses in agony. I knew you'd be a sore loser. Me, sore? Another flick of the wrist. Bond shrieks and slumps. I never understood all these elaborate torches. It is the simplest thing to cause more pain than man can possibly endure. And of course... It's not only the immediate agony, but the knowledge that if you do not yield soon enough, there will be little left to identify as a man. The only question remains, will you yield the time? He strikes. <laughs> Bond bites his lip rather than scream. <laughs> Mrs. Lind, will me give the account number if she hasn't already, and I will let, of course, insert my own. All I need from you is the password. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I have a little itch there. Would you mind? Angered, Le Chiffre hits even harder. James grimaces but doesn't cry out. That was good, <laughs> but a little to the left. <laughs> yes, thank you. Perfect. Now you can tell all your friends that you died scratching my balls. That was somebody completely else, but I don't know who it was. <laughs> I died. Oh, that, was, mm, that was not Klaus Kinski. That sounded like Lucille Ball. I, okay. Well, great, guys. Great. Yannick, you did a great but Trump. My died line is great. Ah. I can see the Trump hands. I died. I died. <laughs> I died. <laughs> so not true. Not true. Fake news. Oh, it's... Yeah. It's really, it's really fantastic. Uh, Some of them are villains. Some mm -hmm. of the, the politicians in our world today yeah. and of the past. If you yeah. look at the East Germans, they were all mm -hmm. villains. Mm -hmm. yeah. Franz Josef I mean, Strauss. Yeah, <laughs> well, he was, he was just a, he was just a weapon smuggler. Mm -hmm. So basically Valentin. Valentin Zukovsky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What weapons does he push? I thought he pushes Gavia mostly. Valentin Dimitrich Zukovsky. Mm. Valentin Dmitrievich Zhukovsky. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Was he the last Russian to appear in that in the series? Is uh. it over with Russians? Is that is that would you say that is an area where you can go to now safely with the whole political situation to have another Russian as a villain? 
I think you know the po- the current politics shouldn't really be a matter. You know, it's it's always it's make believe, it's fantasy, it's it's entertainment. So, no, that's that's my opinion. I wouldn't say it is over. I wouldn't I would go with they going to handle it differently. Definitely, yeah. That's not going to to to. They're not going to handle the Russians like they did in the pre- previous movies, or uh, even Ian Fleming handled it in their novels. No. Hmm. No. no, I think. I thought about it the other day. The fun thing is, the Cold War is, uh, well, I wouldn't say over. There Mm -hmm. still is a part of the Cold War left, Mm -hmm. um, especially with the political climate we are in now. But when you make a new Bond film in our time, 2025, 26, 27, you need a modern thread uh, that Bond can tackle. But still, when you look at Russia and what they do, not just militarily, but secretly behind closed doors with all their fake news. I mean, they have fake computer firms that create bots for social media and everything. They have whole groups, houses full of people who are on Facebook all day, who are on Instagram, writing and acting as bots. I mean, that is technically techno terrorism yeah that i find very very interesting and i'm pretty sure if there is another world war situation the next war will be fought with technology not so much with soldiers on the ground yes i mean what happens if you threaten a country like sweden who went almost cashless they don't have any cash money anymore you are not welcome to pay with cash in most Swedish shops, restaurants, pubs, bars, hotels, whatever. What if you attack their banking system? Well, the yeah. country would be in a complete blackout. Yeah. Yeah, you move you sort of move into tomorrow never dies territory almost. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's like a, history. It's yeah. like uh Live Free or Die Hard. Anybody seen the movie, I guess? And so uh mm-hmm. The fire sale, as uh, the, the, the hacker used to refer about it, um, you start with uh, some, some very important uh, departments of the whole government and then you completely can shut it down, as it mm-hmm. is in the movie. And uh, uh, But when it comes to World War Three, Benjamin, I think it is a short war. It, it's not going to be a long war, in my opinion. No. Probably not, no. No. We have too many people with a finger on the button. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm back in a second. Okay. Yeah. No. So, Yannick, how, how, how was it that you... Uh, um, how do you come to the Bond fan, uh, fan base? Uh, are you... Are, since since what, what time are you are you in our illustrated uh, community, uh, as one said? So. Well, I, I don't know how long it is how long it has been, but, uh, you know, I sort of... You know, after we had that incident with Eon uh, three years ago, I sort of, you know, I I, I left the whole Bond fandom thing. I, I still enjoy the movies and stuff, but I don't publicly engage in the stuff no anymore. Okay. You know. Okay. And and have you known uh, Benjamin for a long time or? Oh, uh, I I no no not so much a long time. I think we're used to encounter ourselves around one year ago, one and a half year ago, or something. And on what occasion? Um, it was uh, uh, an Insta Life he used to do, uh, yeah, and I was uh, one of the guests, and uh, and then we uh, started chatting uh, around uh, on Instagram, and meanwhile we are connected via WhatsApp too, and uh, yeah, it is. Uh, he is definitely um, he's a treasure to the Bond uh, fan fan base in my right. opinion. He did a great job, and he's always powering, and he he has got so much creative uh, ideas on the on what to do with the mm-hmm. James Bond discussion. And I mean, uh, our our passion, James Bond, especially, it is full of pages. There is a never-ending right. book. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, the the you you should check out the the lavatories. They are fantastic. So golden marble. I hope you weren't talking about me. We were actually. Oh, oh really? We don't were. hype me, please. Yeah, yeah we like we don't like you. 
That's normal. That's normal. Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I, I used to 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 tell uh, Yannick uh, what great job you do on the fan uh, fan base, and you always come up with such great ideas, and you're open to uh, to to another ideas when one written to you, and uh, it's a. Uh, it's great. Some cars, some 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 guys like you, because uh, we actually keeping the Bond franchise alive at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, the producers doesn't do it in, in, in that uh -huh. job, and I'm not sure if Ian is going to uh, publish. I, I I might get the opinion that Barbara Bobsy, as I call her, uh, from uh, from very certain moments, uh, Bobsy is not more into. She, she seems to be not more into the James Bond franchise. No. I mean, how the the how is it possible that the that they gave so much power in decision and in making the James Bond movie No Time to Die in Daniel Craig, and and of course Danny Boyle doesn't want to kill James Bond off. Mm -hmm. It's obvious, and mm -hmm. and and Daniel Craig er uh, ah, and every time when I when I when I go online and you go on the the Bond fan pages. And you see another picture of Daniel Craig. Um, the last one was it was at the in the United States, which was uh, uh, what was with the Grammys or whatever, or mm -hmm. or I don't know. Every time they're smiling in the camera, and it's over. I mean, his mm -hmm. tenure is over. They Thank God, yeah. started to something new because the Bond franchise or the Bond fa fan base is asked for it. Because mm -hmm. to be to to be honest. I mean, I'm 40 since the f February the 6th. Uh, I turned 40 on February the 6th. So um, I know a lot of people who never seen a James Bond movie in an entire life. And my daughter especially is 14. And mm -hmm. lucky to, 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 to me, I started to, to, to get her into the Bond franchise. Mm -hmm. But she only uh, watches the movies uh, with her father, of course, of her father, not of Bond itself. Of course, mm -hmm. this generation is completely different, and they grew up just like us with James Bond. It is no more longer the case. So that's right. It's um, nothing comes uh, comes after it, no. uh, and the generation that is it is it Benjamin is it generation ge that born people at 2010 and upwards Gen, Gen Z or what is it called Gen Z? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, they they haven't seen a James Bond movie. Yeah. What does she say about? Uh... Bond. What are her opinions, her thoughts? Uh, we started with uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, because it was the one who uh, we had to look at the PG-13 restrictions. And uh, and I we started with uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, and she really liked the portrayal of uh, Major Anya Amasova. To be, she's a mm -hmm. tough, tough woman in, in the day. And, and it, 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 for her, it was much important that the woman is portrayed not as her, I mean, as James Bond is going on the bat every time. She was. She likes the movie, and she still likes the movie, mm -hmm. but um, she has not a uh, so good opinion about James Bond. Yeah. As in, which is uh, yeah, 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 as in, yeah. She's uh, She's coming up with uh, her statement. She was uh, James Bond is like it's a bubble. It's a bubble dream. It's it's not a world which uh, is really existing in in the re in reality. In some ways, uh, James Bond doesn't behave good. Well, I think I think not not to be an insult, you know, not to be insulting, but I don't think the fourteen-year-old girls are the target audience of Bond, you know. So I can understand yeah, that. No, but yeah. it's an interesting viewpoint. Yeah, it's a really interesting viewpoint. I like I like viewpoints from uh, all ages. Like for example, uh, I read uh, James Bond with my students. So I just read uh, Casino Royale with a student and we did uh, parts of character analysis of Bond and Le Chiffre and there are so many different outcomes to this, how they analyze what they have just read um, when you compare it to what the experts say about it. It's really, really interesting. And especially that, I've said it before in a podcast, when you take this torture scene that we've uh, just read in funny voices but when you take this torture scene that ian fleming wrote it is very very interesting because it's one of the i think one of the longest chapters in casino royale 
Yeah. And Bond has almost nothing to say. Le Chiffre is the only person who's speaking because Bond is uh, either passing out or is shortly before passing out, uh, speaking about reaching the peak of pain. And after that, you don't care anymore. You start to like the pain, things like that. So Fleming was very descriptive in th this torture scene, how it works. And Le Chiffre knows how to use it well to get to information. It, yeah. uh it doesn't end well for him, but I thought it was masterfully written by yeah, Fleming. Absolutely. And my student thought so too. And he's in uh, class 10. <clears throat> so that is about where you can read and understand that because everything that went before that is very a lot of spy stuff. Um, Bulgarians trying to kill Bond and this setting in Royal Les Eaux and uh, the Bakara game. Bakara is something that, that modern students, modern people cannot understand. At one at one point, we even thought we found a mistake because he, my student said, uh, didn't Bond lose at the end? Because sort of Le Chiffre had a higher hand. Uh, that's from the explanation that we got before. And I was, I had to reread it. <laughs> and I thought, well, Fleming did not make a mistake, did he? <laughs> but no, it was all safe and sound. It was all, it was all good. Bond won. Casino Royale is a simple book to to analyze, much like Sherlock Holmes. I I either read Sherlock Holmes with my students or Bond, because great character analysis. When you read the first description of Watson about Holmes. In the first novel of Sherlock Holmes, you immediately get a picture that is not pleasant yeah. of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. He's so full of himself. Yeah. He's a drug addict and he hates women. Or he, Let's say he dislikes women. He has no interest in having a relationship or being married or something like that. He jokes about Watson being married, things like that. But you immediately get a picture where in other stories you have to wait for a long time and put pieces together. Mm -hmm. But yeah. with those writings, uh, also Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot, you get a very clear picture of what he is about. He's a little bit mental. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he has control issues, Hercule Poirot. Yeah. Uh -huh. He has, has issues uh, in, in many, many different ways. Well, these are expert writers. And what they did was world famous, brilliant writing. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. And I like. And it. I'm very happy to get insights of students that age. Definitely. Yeah, I like the the chapter um, in Casino Real in Fleming uh, wrote about the death of Vesper. I mean, the whole part is so built up so well. And I mean, in in those in this chapter, you see James Bond acting like a human being, not as a Superman. Uh, he's crying. He he's cried out, tears full of the, running how, down his face, and wow! It was I mean, Casino Royale was 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 a great start to to kick off the the the, the novels of the James Bond franchise. That's what I hate, yeah. to be honest. What? When when Bond cries and his family stuff, I hate that. Okay. That's where where it loses me. Interesting. Uh, okay. Because, like you say, you, you phrased it correctly. Like James Bond to me is like you know the, the Brosnan tenure, where he was really like this more like um, super, almost Superman type of type of character. That's that's how I picture Bond, me personally. Okay. Yeah, but I mean that that was uh, mainly the films that threw you off in that direction because that was right. not written in the book. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. It was never written in the book. Any anything of of. Um, uh, Bond's past history or his parents mm. or his childhood or anything. There was nothing like that in Casino Royale. So they, uh, in Skyfall, when they um, sort of really were at the high point of the story arc with Bond going back to his childhood home, this bleak, dark place, which in the end explodes because he doesn't care mm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, they really went over the top there in the film yeah right. that's where it lost me as well mm -hmm. absolutely i i agree it was unnecessary i can understand that it is 
maybe in today's world important to show the emotional world of a character like this but there are 50 percent who say that's not what i want to see right. and there are the other 50 percent that say oh it's interesting that they explore that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean you have so many layers of bond fans who would say i really like what they did there and others who said bond stopped being bond after brosnan right yeah. And both sides, I can totally understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. But and I myself, I'm caught uh, totally in the middle because it's it's not just uh, I don't particularly just look at the story arc that they establish with Craig, but um, also changing the formula. I mean, in Casino Royale, they took away Money Penny, they took away uh, Q, right. and and in Skyfall, they brought it all back. So this film, to me, is just a very restorative piece of film. It restored all the formula aspects that once made the franchise famous and great, mm -hmm. because they knew they couldn't, I wouldn't say sell it without it, but they couldn't go on without it. Yes. People mm -hmm. wanted it. People demanded it. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are at a totally different point where also they, as producers, I think, have to decide which way do we go? Mm -hmm. What part, what side do we lean to? The 50% who said Craig was shite and the other 50% who said, oh, I really liked what they did there. Do we continue that? Do we start another story arc, maybe with Bond's younger years, and explore that? But you know, the the, the topic of today's you know uh, kickoff podcast was like uh, foreshadowing the Bond twenty six thing. But am I assuming that anything is going to happen at all? Which I mean is nowhere guaranteed. But do you actually think we'll ever get this thing back? I'm not specifically referring to Pierce Brosnan's tenure, but you know, like these Bond movies where you have like your, your classic rap formula, like the self-contained story, the great music from it, from A to Z, where you have the great locations, where you have typical Bond girls. I just think this stuff will never come back. Mm. Yeah, it, it might be, but, but coming back is a, is a nice word, Yannick. I have to uh, uh, say ciao from this moment on of course i have to get up very early in uh uh next uh next day such sure. a pleasure chatting with you again Likewise, uh, yeah. i hope you keep her keep in touch on instagram absolutely. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, whatever happens with bond i guess we're going to see and maybe it lures yannick back into the cinema whatever comes our way i think we have to look at it we have to judge it we have to accept it and uh see what we make of it um Thank you, you two, Yannick and Willy, for being with me for this after premiere episode of uh, episode one of the podcast. And now it's probably mid-March when this episode is released and a few more podcast episodes have been released. If you like to have more episodes and you like to be notified, be sure to like and subscribe to the Bond Bulletin. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform this is on, follow us and you'll be notified when the next episode goes live next week, Saturday. Until then, thank you, Yannick. Thank you, Willy. I hope we see each other soon in the Golden Grotto Lounge. Absolutely. Thank you, Absolutely. guys. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.